Hey everyone, and welcome to Skill Caps 8.3 tier list for all things Melee. This tier list has been put together with our group of rank one consultants and has been based around Gladiator ratings and above. Since our last tier list, there have been a lot of changes to the game including new essences, new trinkets, and everybody's favorite addition, corruption. So we're going to be taking all the relevant melee specs and placing them into four separate tiers, with the weakest spec going into the C tier, working our way up to the strongest specs that will be placed into our S tier. Throughout this video, we'll also be making comparisons to our previous 8.3 tier list, which was produced before Corruption. We'll not only be giving you our reasoning behind these rankings, but also listing some compositions for each of these specs. Without any further delay, let's get started. Coming in at our lowest tier, C, which is short for, come on Blizzard, buff this spec already, we've got Enhancement Shamans. Sadly, Enhancement hasn't gotten much love for the entirety of BFA. It almost feels like Blizzard have forgotten about them. It's not even one of those cases where they're shining in other aspects like PvE, for instance. Enhancement right now, for lack of a better word, is just kind of lackluster. Although bringing decent burst damage with Ascendance on their pops and all of the disruption that you expect from a Shaman, Enhancement is held back by its weaknesses. When compared to other melee, it's just way too easy to target down and focus, with limited defensives and heavily relying on their off heals to survive, which then goes to further hurt their consistent damage. Not only that, but Enhancement really does struggle with uptime on the high mobility classes, having their only gap closer tied to the same talent row as one of their best defensives. Enhancement also struggles when it comes to compositions, having their only real viable option being Turbo, which isn't exactly viable in the first place. Although recently Enhancement has seen some resurgence as a a counter to disc priests in tournaments. So who knows, maybe with a few changes in the meta, we'll see our old cleavers Pharaoh lunging up our tier list. That's going to be it for our C tier. Our next tier is going to be B. B for boy, these specs have seen better days. Our first addition is going to be Unholy Death Knight. Previously S tier in our previous tier list, Unholy has seen a pull from Grace. But why is that? Well, Unholy saw some very big nerfs to its death strike, and with the game shifting more into a burst style meta, Unholy just doesn't deal the pressure it needs to. In spite of that, Unholy does still have some very good consistent damage, and even after Deathstrike nerfs, is still durable thanks to their defensive cooldowns. Unholy's biggest strength is how disruptive and annoying to play against they are, with multiple interrupts, tons of ways to stop your casts, and of course, Chains of Ice. They're just lacking the burst damage that Frost Death Knight brings. This results in a lack of compositions, with the only really viable one being Unholy Demon Hunter, paired up with a few different options for healer. Our second melee charging into our tier list is going to be Arms Warrior. Despite having a few very good compositions available to them, Arms are overshadowed by a lot of their melee counterparts. Arms Warrior brings very good team utility, with their extremely low cooldown on Rallying Cry, coupled with niche talents like Duel or War Banner, coupled with very high consistent damage Damage if they can actually reach their target. The power of Sharpened Blade also cannot be denied being a great way to set up kills. However, Arms Warrior does struggle due to its lack of lockdown, having only Stormbolt, Fear, and a short duration pummel. Compared to other melee, Warriors are also relatively easy to focus down as they lack any form of self-healing, which is something almost all other melee bring in some form. Arms Warrior still has some very strong compositions, namely when paired up with Destruction Warlock or Demon Hunter or Mage. And our final addition to our B tier is going to be Rhett Paladin. Rhett Paladins have had some issues throughout BFA and have yet to see any light at the end of the tunnel. Despite their obvious flaws though, Rep Paladins bring some very high damage, and the addition of the Versatile Corruption has helped with one of their inherent weaknesses. However, burst damage and utility alone is not able to make up for the heavy lack of mobility and any form of a gap closer or reliable slow. Not to mention, once a Rep Paladin is out of both defensive or offensive cooldowns, then they become extremely underwhelming. These weaknesses leave Rep Paladins with very limited compositions. Rep Warrior and Rep Hunter are the only ones really worth mentioning, and neither of which really shine very bright. So this is what our tier list looks now as we head to the A tier. And the A tier is full of specs that are without a doubt really good right now, but just fall short of our S tier. Rolling in as our first addition, we have Windwalker Monk. Windwalkers currently have some of the best burst in the game with cooldowns like Fist of Fury, paired up with Storm, Earth, and Fire, or Touch of Death. Coupled with borderline overpowered mobility consisting of multiple rolls, a portal, and even their Flying Serpent Kick. Windwalker also brings some niche team utility in the form of Tiger's Lust, Ring of Peace, and Ride the Wind. But where Windwalkers fall short is their lack of lockdown and CC. 
outside of a 3 second paralysis and their leg sweep, which are both hefty cooldowns, they offer nothing in terms of crowd control. So they secure a spot in our A tier yet again. As for compositions, Windwalker's best right now is when paired up with the DH, although Destro Windwalker and even Windwalker DK are also very good options. Alright, moving on, going into our A tier, we've got Frost DK. Stronger than their unholy counterparts, Frost offers the same strong slows, the same defensive cooldowns, but with much higher burst. The damage coming from Chill Streak when used in a setup composition like Windwalker DK is absurd. Combine this with their ability to grip your enemies in and blinding sleet in conjunction with Gladiator's Spite Trinkets makes Frost DKs a force to be reckoned with. Delirium is also a noteworthy mention, helping to connect to high mobility targets like mages or monks a lot easier. But Frost DKs do have a standout weakness in their lack of mobility and their reliance on chill streak setups to get any real kill potential. And the best 3v3 composition right now for Frost DK is without a doubt Windwalker Frost DK Miss Weaver. Also pouncing into our A tier, we've got Barrel Druid. Feral Druid has jumped up a tier from our previous tier list. Ferals bring some very high burst damage on a low cooldown, consistent stuns, and their extremely strong Ferocious Wound, reducing the max health of a target by 16%. The addition of the new Corruption Polearm, Ripping Flames, and also trinkets like Drestagath have all greatly helped Feral's burst setup playstyle. But it's not only their damage that makes them strong. Having the option to spec into Cyclone for added CC and their ability to put out decent off healing makes them an asset. But their major weakness all comes in the form of survival, being a susceptible target to dying inside of stuns and also being trained down. Despite Versatile helping to combat this, Feral still remains to be very squishy. Their flagship composition of jungle is one of the strongest compositions in the game, which makes Feral's very deserving of our A tier. And our final addition to our penultimate tier is Survival Hunter. Survival has since harpooned up a tier from our previous tier list. Survival brings great consistent damage, a mortal strike effect, and even the ability to deal damage from range, coupled with their insane short cooldown instant CC, not only for healers, but also things like roots for DPS. But what Survival Hunter lacks is just the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other melee classes. Overall, Survival relies heavily on their crowd control to carry them, and usually it does. But singled out as a spec, it doesn't really shine above other melee classes outside of their CC. This is especially prevalent when focused as outside of their long cooldown aspect of the turtle, Survival doesn't bring too many defensives. But partnered up with a Feral Druid and having new additions like Drestagath and Remote Guidance Device Trinkets, along with Reaping Flames, has helped to push Survival Hunters up a tier. This concludes our A tier and leaves our overall tier list looking like this which now leaves us with the moment you've all been waiting for, our last tier. These specs make it into our highest S tier, have the edge above the rest of the competition, and are hands down our strongest 8.3 melee at Gladiator Plus ratings. First up, we've got Demon Hunter. Demon Hunters have managed to climb up a tier thanks to the new additions to the game, being great users of the Gushing Wounds Corruption, as well as benefiting greatly from Reaping Flames and the addition of the new trinkets. Demon Hunter's strengths include the highest consistent damage in the game, out of this world mobility, and even an abundance of defensive cooldowns. Combine this with how hard they are to kill thanks to Leech and just how easy they are to play. Not to mention always having the fallback of Mana Rift to use your opponent's mana as a win condition. Without a doubt a god class that needs some tuning. The only real weakness of a Demon Hunter is their vulnerability inside of stuns and also their lack of consistent slow. Yeah, I know Master of the Glaive and Raden weapons exist, but Fell Eruption is too important and the Raden weapons are not a consistent slow. Although their strengths as an individual spec are without question, Demon Hunters do lack some comp options, being pigeonholed into cleaves like when paired up with DK, Windwalker, or Warriors. Our last spec, Shadow Stepping into our S tier, is going to be Assassination Rogue. Previously in our S tier last tier list, Assassination has only gained strength since. Seemingly bringing everything, Assassination brings high consistent damage, insane lockdown with their high duration interruption and kidney shot, great crowd control with blind, cheap shot, grow, sap, some of the highest bursts in the game during Vendetta, and to top it all off, have possibly the best defensive in the game with an immunity to magic damage and a 100% dodge during Invasion, not to mention the ability to vanish. What doesn't Rogue bring? Well, it's certainly not mobility either as they have access to Shadow Step and Sprint. For strengths, Assassination honestly brings it all. Their weaknesses are few and far between, with the only real standout one being that they're vulnerable to dying inside of stuns, and even then that's only if they're unable to pre-faint. Assassination has two extremely strong comps available to them, both RMP and RM Pala, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Alright everyone, that's going to be it for our up-to-date tier list for melee in patch 8.3. 
Remember, this list was produced with our Rank 1 consultants targeted for Gladiator and above ratings. Be sure to stay on lookout for our Caster and Healer tier lists coming out shortly. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.